Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 87. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, you're going to learn about three reality stars on Bravo TV who are making big income and big financial mistakes. This show came about just as a fun idea because occasionally I watch reality shows, and there is one reality show I watch religiously, but it's total trash and just sort of um, an indulgence that occasionally I take, and I do enjoy watching a couple shows. So I wanted to share with you what mistakes I see these reality stars making because obviously they're having some success, getting some good paychecks. And I see that they are making some common errors that are going to preclude them from growing that income into wealth and actually becoming wealthy later in their life. So I wanted to share this with you. It's just kind of a fun idea, but I thought there were some really good points that you can learn from and take away from here. So I've got three takeaways at the end, and I have a big announcement I'm going to make too at the end. So stay tuned for that. So as I said, I don't watch a lot of television But occasionally I watch a reality show called The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And one of the stars is a former model who's also a mom and an author. And her name is Brandi Glanville. She recently received a $100,000 royalty check from the sales of her book. She promptly went out and bought a new Range Rover with that. It's a beautiful white gorgeous, brand new Range Rover. I'm sure it was easily over that $100,000. Now, Brandy lives in a rented house, and she's got a couple of kids. She could have saved that $100,000 for a down payment, but instead she went for the big car purchase, which is, I think, a big mistake. Using the opportunity cost of money, if she had invested that $100,000 instead, She could have had grown that to $259,000 in 10 years, assuming a 10% interest rate, or $672,000 in 20 years, and $1.7 million in 30 years. Wow, that's a huge difference, and I'm just so sad that she had to go out and look rich rather than actually get on the path to becoming rich. So there's another reality show on Bravo called Don't Be Tardy with Kim and Croy Bierman. And they're total spending disasters. They have an adorable family, a gorgeous home, and a storybook-looking life. But they're making horrible choices with money, and that's going to come home to roost in the future. Croy is a professional football player with the Atlanta Falcons, so he's earning a high income while he's playing pro ball, but they should be socking away money for their future. Instead, Croy has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on Kim's diamond rings, watches, bracelets, and earrings. She's a walking jewelry store, and it appears to be bought all at retail prices. If you're going to spend that much on jewelry, at least find a wholesale connection. After all, diamonds are just commodities. They are made of carbon, and some are cut better than others, and of course have clarity and color and all of that, but otherwise they all come from the ground and they're all the same. So why pay 10 times more when you don't have to? I was fortunate to find the Wholesale Jewelry Mart in San Francisco when my late husband and I got engaged. We paid one-tenth the value that the diamond ring appraised for. So remember, you can have whatever you want, just buy it at the right price. In this case, find a way to pay wholesale, not retail. Okay, I have to fess up. My favorite television show, and I watch it religiously, is called Million Dollar Listing New York. It's a show about three New York real estate agents. Luis is a Puerto Rican real estate agent who's always trying to catch up to the big dogs, Frederick and Ryan. And Luis recently bought a brand new Maserati. I estimate the cost of the Maserati to be well over $100,000. In addition to the big price tag, Luis also has to insure the car, garage it, 
and maintain it. In New York City, that is not cheap. People have paid $225,000 just for a garage. And in fact, there's a waiting list of people who want to pay $225,000 for a garage. Can you believe that? So let's say he bought one. He didn't, but let's say he bought a garage. If he if he had, his grand total then would be over $325,000. And again, if we use opportunity cost and assume 10%, had Luis invested that $325,000 instead, guess how much it would grow to in 10, 20, or 30 years? Well, in 10 years, at 10%, it would grow to $843,000. In 20 years, at 10%, it would grow to $2.1 million dollars. And at 30 years at 10%, it would grow to $5.6 million. So not only did Luis make a poor decision for today, but this will affect him for the rest of his life with money he could have had, but won't. Even a car bought a few years old in great condition is a lot smarter than buying a new car. So here's something exciting that has happened that came back to me that one of our listeners has followed my advice, and it made a huge difference in his life. And I want to give a shout out to Mark, who listened to my podcast about buying new cars and made a smarter choice. Mark was all set to buy a brand new truck. He was going to take out a loan to buy it, in fact. And he admits he didn't really need it, but he really, really wanted a new truck. So he listened to my podcast about buying new cars and opportunity cost and realized that in just the first few years, he'd lose at least $20,000 of its value just right out of his pocket, right out of his net worth. He thought about all the new cars he had bought in his life and how much the depreciation loss for each one of those new cars must add up to. And it was well over $100,000 and probably into hundreds of thousands of dollars because he had literally bought dozens of new cars during his lifetime. He was determined not to make the same mistake again. He searched for the same truck that he originally wanted that he had planned to buy new, but he looked for a used truck. He found one in mint condition with low mileage, a few years old, and bought it, forget this, only $16,500 cash, much less than the new truck he wanted to buy. Plus, he was going to pay interest on a loan, so it also saved him the interest he would have paid to borrow money. Now his truck is all paid for. He won't take the huge loss in depreciation that he would have with the new truck. And I think that is phenomenal. Makes me thrilled to hear. Congratulations, Mark. I'm so proud of you. And congratulations to any listener who is taking my advice and seeing it work in their life. I am so proud and it makes me so happy to see people apply what they learn. So here are some key takeaways for you. Number one, if you spend your principal, you don't get it back. Your savings or lump sums of principal are to be invested and grown into wealth. Here's the key phrase that I came up with. Are you ready? If you spend it, you end it. Get it? If you spend it, you end it. If you invest it, you're growing it. So, and I've got to think of a better rhyme for that. Have you invested it, you nest it? No, I don't think so. Well, anyway, we'll come up with a better rhyme for that. But if you spend it, you end it. That's it. The money's gone and you can't invest it. So just remember that you want to invest lump sums as soon as you can and even invest your income on a regular basis, of course. Number two, prioritize your spending on the things that you really value and then shop for the right price. Don't be impulsive and pay retail. Shop and find a way to buy it wholesale or discounted or on sale. The bottom line is this. If you want wealth, don't spend it on depreciating assets. Invest it in appreciating assets. That is the only way to become wealthy. I'm so excited to tell you about the Be Wealthy and Smart wealth building community I'm starting because I believe true wealth goes way beyond your investments to your entire lifestyle. It's called the Be Wealthy and Smart VIP Experience. It's for people who want to know where wealth building opportunities are so you can attain financial freedom. One of the limitations of my doing a podcast is I really feel the information I share needs to be 
permanent. In other words, it has to exist as a library of my body of work on the shelf and have a shelf life so that people can come in a year from now and learn from it or two years from now and learn from it. It's very hard for it to be extremely timely and and focusing on current news, because that gets too dated. And I want people to be able to come in and consume no matter what is happening. So that led me to think, I really need to start a community where people can come in and I can do the kinds of updates I want to do in my own wealth building community. And I'm super excited about it. You know, I can't control when someone's going to come in and listen to my podcast and what has already happened or if things have changed when they come in. But in my own community, I know when people are listening, I know what's going on and I can comment on that. And it's just going to be something that I can really make timely for everyone. And I'm so, so thrilled to do that. So if you're not already on my email list and you want this kind of investment and wealth building information, go to my website, lindapjones.com and sign up for my 10 quick financial tips to boost your wealth. That will give you some great easy tips. Plus you'll be notified how to learn more about the Be Wealthy and Smart VIP experience. Did you know I also share financial tips checklists, and resources on my Facebook page? Yes, I do. And I don't want you to miss out on a one of them. If we haven't connected yet on Facebook, please go to my facebook.com forward slash Linda P. Jones fan page and like the page. I'd love to meet you and stay connected with you there. Come on over, say hi, tell me who you are and what you think of the show. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Maybe I'll be reading your review on the air. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.